All right, so now that we're over at the stove, and turn my fan on. It's important to have kind of a wide skillet. This is about a 10 inch, 12 inch skillet, nice and deep, tight fitting lid. Uh, that's gonna help with the rice cooking process. I'm gonna go ahead and start over medium heat. Let our pan get a little bit warm. Check the camera here, make sure everything's on center. We're all good. So we're gonna let that get a little bit warm while it's warming up. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of butter. Everybody got me off one class of doing butter, and now we're gonna go double butter. So about two ounces of butter. I'm gonna only use about half of that. I may finish with some of it later with the scallions, just to help with the richness. What we're going to basically be doing here is we're going to start by browning off our uh, sausage and uh, sausage and chicken to build up some flavor in the pan. Uh, this is a nice kind of stainless, or I'm sorry, cast iron, um, cast iron Teflon hybrid. So hopefully we pick up some flavor, get to build some things up, but also it was a nice heavy pan so it'll help the rice cook. One of the things that when we get into the cooking of this, we don't want our rice to cook really fast and be hard. We don't want it to overcook and be soft. So you know, that's where the ratio, two to one ratio, we're gonna be using the basmati rice today. Um, it's pretty much my favorite and most reliable rice to use, and one I feel most comfortable. There's a lot of really good, um, Rice is being, being like heirloom rice is being refarmed to Carolina Gold, things like that. They have a lot of steps to them. They're complicated, and I really didn't want to get that into this crowd, or into this class yet. So we're gonna go ahead and just put our chicken in there. Then we're gonna put our sausage. And what this is gonna do is gonna start drawing some more of the flavor out, so that we have that to build upon when we get into the sauce. So at this point, we don't want to move it around a whole lot. We want to make sure all the proteins touch in the bottom of the pan. So we want to get a little bit of rendering of that fat. These were slow smoke, so a lot of the chicken fat's still on them. I'm going to start bringing out a lot of that flavor now. You know, this is another, you know, one of the things I kind of go back to when these cooking pots is the building of flavor and constantly getting, you know, layers of flavor. And this is one of them. One of the ways, let me see if I can get a little bit better angle here. This is one of those methods and one of those dishes, you know, very traditional kind of Spanish, more or less cooking. You know, you're taking and adding some different flavors into it. So notice if you see this, a little bit of blood in the chicken, that's normal. It's actually from where I cut through the joint when I smoked them, they uh, still had the leg on them. I went ahead and cut them off so there'd be extra so you wouldn't have that extra leg and you know, it's going into our Fat Tuesday uh, dinner coming up here. Let me go ahead and flip those over. You can see how the sausage is starting to brown up. That's where I'm gonna peek on my creme brulee. Make sure everything's good there. We're we'll just gonna take our time here and show you a little bit of fats and everything working together. Alright, 
leaving, as I'm pouring this off, I'm leaving a good bit of the oil in the pan and butter. You know, I don't want all that flavor that I just started taking out of that chicken and sausage to uh, just kind of get on the dry. So we're gonna take that and add our vegetables. And we're just gonna let this start to cook until these are really nice and tender and translucent. We don't want to cook them, we want to cook these almost or al dente, I should say. You know, slightly translucent, because as we add this, it's going to have a little bit more, a little bit more cooking time to it. And we don't, I, I don't like my vegetables to be completely mushy and kind of have no taste to them. You can see as we're cooking these, just by putting them in that little bit of fat and whatnot that was left in the pan is starting to come up. Slice them up, we'll just let it cook. One of the hardest things about doing these videos for me is I'm used to doing things like these, but I'm doing like four other things. So watching it cook is very hard for me. I just want to like stare at it until it cooks faster and I know physics doesn't work that way. You know, this is really, you know, this process is really drawing out a lot of flavors and building on a lot of flavors and building into a lot of flavors. As it's cooked, you know, one of the things you want to be watching for here when it's cooking that your gas isn't so high that your vegetables are burning, or that it's so low that you're not getting this nice sizzle kind of crackle effect. If it's too low, what you'll actually do is start boiling the vegetables or stewing them, and that's not kind of what we're looking for here. Give it a couple, a couple turns. Part of that sizzle, that's the moisture cooking out of the vegetables. It's very natural. It's a very high um, sizzle. You got your heat too high. If you don't have that at all, again, too low. You want to kind of hit that sweet spot. I'm probably at about a medium high heat. You know, every stove's a little bit different, so you just want to give it some time. about there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop it down spice. Uh, it's a good, rather than mixing, you know, 17 or 18 different spices to make a Cajun mix, it's a good uh, mix. I met the chef years ago, 20 years ago, maybe longer than that now. I was really a great guy to talk to. Um, bothered him a lot of the food show in Philly, so I'm going to add about half of it, just nice coating over the top. Uh, do remember there is salt in that. So too much of it will be too salty and we can always revisit later and add more salt. Just going to start cooking to kind of bring out the spices. Moving around some, I want the spices to toast. I want this to toast up just a little bit in there. We're doing a two to one ratio on the rice. Uh, one of the things that's very important when cooking any rice dish, and I'm also gonna throw my bay leaf in now, uh, is to look at the ratio that's on the side of the bag. Every rice is a little bit different. I've always found the best starting point is kind of to go with that, what the manufacturer says or what the producer says is the best point.
Hopefully one of the dogs get whatever I just threw out of there. So once that's toasted for a moment or two, I'm gonna go ahead, I got about four ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and do about four ounces of tomato product. That will be in a four ounce container, that's just kind of what I have handy. I just want to cook this ever so slightly. I don't want a strong tomato flavor, but I do want a little acidity from the tomatoes. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get my sausage back in the party. Now we have two cups of chicken stock. Stock we make at the restaurant. So this is actually a chicken and pork stock. We tend to make a lot of what I call bastard stock, so not straight chicken or straight pork. Or straight beef. Well, it's straight beef sometimes. But uh, we just, those are the bones we have, so that's what we make the stock out of. So we're just going to put that in. Then we're going to let this uncover until it comes up to a simmer. And then we're actually going to lower the heat till it's just simmering and cover it. That's why it's important to have a pan with a tight fitting lid. If you don't have a lid, a piece of aluminum foil will work. But we don't want a lot of the moisture to evaporate per se. We want the rice to you know, and to incorporate into the rice. At this point also, I'm going to go ahead and check my seasoning. Though it's not the final seasoning, you know, this will give me a good indication if I want to add some more salt. Um, if you're not, if you're buying an andouille, or buying, you know, using a pre-smoked chicken breast or, or chicken, something like that, or not chicken, you're going to get different flavors, you know, you just want to check. To me, that has a nice bit of uh, heat and salt, so we're going to leave it kind of go. I'm going to turn this down to low. I'm going to turn this down lower. And I'm just going to kind of give everything a move around. I don't want to move it around too much, I don't want to break all that up. I'm going to go ahead and add my shrimp. Again, I'm adding my shell on because, you know, that's kind of where I want some more flavor to incorporate from. But everybody has their differences. You know, some people don't like peeling them after it cooked. You know, peel the shells off and we'll be good to go. So at this point, I'm going to cover it. Make sure my heat's nice and low, and we're going to give that about 10 minutes or so to just kind of chill.